Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International with me, Keith Johnston. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa held a telephone call today with Bahraini bodybuilding champion Sami Al Haddad and congratulated him on his safe release and safe return alongside the Bahraini fishermen to the Kingdom of Bahrain. His Majesty the King got assured about the health of the Bahraini champion, wishing him every success. His Majesty the King expressed appreciation to the Bahraini champion and all Bahraini citizens for the diligence in serving the nation and lifting the flag in Victoria's region and international events. His Majesty stressed appreciation and keenness on caring for all citizens, affirming the government's endeavour to serve them wherever they are. Bahraini champion Sami Al Haddad expressed utmost thanks to His Majesty the King for the call and for his noble directives and great interest in the issue of the released Bahraini fishermen. He also extended thanks to His Majesty the King for the care accorded to all Bahraini citizens, taking pride in His Majesty's wise leadership and wishing His Majesty abundant health and happiness. His Majesty the King's personal representative and President of the Supreme Council for Environment, the SCE, owner of Bahrain One racing team, Hassan Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad Al Khalifa, praised the team's perfect start in the first round of the Bahrain National Speed Championship, Drag, where the Emirati driver Khaled Abalushi achieved first place. His Highness affirmed that the efforts made by the team in a short period of time to determine the team's readiness contributed to a strong entry into the competition and this resulted in winning the place in the first round of the race, expressing his wishes for success to the team in the upcoming rounds. For his part, the Emirati driver Khaled Abalushi expressed happiness for achieving first place in the first round of the championship, stressing this achievement was due to the unlimited support of His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad Al Khalifa to continue the march of achievements. The Bahrain One racing team will enter the current season's competitions with great aspirations to compete in all rounds of the championship in addition, increasing the team's readiness to participate in the NHRA World Car Championship in the Pro Mode category, amid great aspirations to achieve the third consecutive title. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Works and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nas bin Hamad Al Khalifa, praised Team Victorious for winning second place in the His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nayana Endurance Festival which was held in the United Arab Emirates for a distance of 120 kilometres by, by the rider Abdullah al Tas. His Highness affirmed that the achievement reflects the status and capabilities of the Bahraini endurance sport in its external participations, especially that His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nayan's endurance festival is considered one of the toughest tournaments in the world. His Highness Sheikh Nas bin Hamad Al Khalifa explained that obtaining the second place for Team Victorious will motivate them to obtain more achievements during the upcoming competitions. His Highness said that the competition the festival witnessed affirms the development of the endurance sport in the Arab world and the high level of precision it has reached and that Team Victorious will always prove its worth in the competitions it participates in. His Highness Sheikh Nas bin Hamad Al Khalifa expressed his appreciation for the outstanding efforts made by the organising committee and his keenness to produce the festival in the best organisational form. He also participated in the award ceremony of the first placed riders in the festival and was keen to follow up on the stages of the race and encourage all riders. The Rashid Equestrian and Horse Racing Club organised the 11th race meeting of the season. The race was held at the club's track in Rafa, Sakir, in the presence of a number of their highnesses and representatives of the sponsoring companies. The event was held in the Al Salam Bank and the Rashid Equestrian and Horse Racing Club Cups comprised seven events. At the end of the race, trophies were presented to the winners.
The three Bahraini citizens, Sami Ibrahim Al Haddad, Mohammed Yusuf Al Dosuri, and Sela Habib Abbas, who had been arrested by the Qatari Coastal and Border Security at Sea, arrived in Bahrain after the release by the Qatari authorities. Upon arrival at Bahrain International Airport, they were welcomed by the Muharraq Governor, Samad bin Hindi Al Manai, who conveyed to them greetings from His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, as well as their congratulations on their safe return to the kingdom. The three citizens extended deepest thanks and gratitude to His Majesty King Hamad and His Royal Highness Crown Prince and Prime Minister for their interest and care which contributed to the release. They also praised the efforts exerted by the Interior Ministry, led by Minister General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, to take all necessary procedures to ensure their safe return home. They also paid tribute to the foreign ministry led by Minister Dr Abdul Latif bin Rashid Al Ziani for his follow up on their case. They also expressed pride in the patriotic and supportive stances expressed by Bahraini citizens towards them. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs expressed its profound thanks and gratitude to the Sultanate of Oman for the efforts exerted by the competent authorities in the Sultanate to coordinate and follow up on the release of the Bahraini citizens detained in Qatar and facilitate their return to the Kingdom of Bahrain. The Ministry considered the release of the Bahraini citizens by the competent um, Qatari authorities a step that reflects the required spirit to complete addressing the pending issues between the two countries in order to enhance cooperation between the GCC states hoping for the release of the Asian sailors who work in Bahraini fishing vessels in consideration of the humanitarian situation. The Bahrain Human Rights Organisation, the European, a Gulf Centre for Human Rights, the Bahrain Human Rights Watch Society and a number of independent human rights groups have expressed its denunciation of what the released citizens have been subjected to from Qatari prisons, noting that Doha deprived them of the human rights during the period of detention. The human rights organisations affirmed that their arbitrary detention developed into revenge in addition to waging a psychological war against them, which is clear and significant violation by Qatar. The general coordinator of the four organisations, Faisal Fallad, stated that the organisations will adopt the human rights file for these Bahrainis before human rights organisations and international bodies. Foreign Minister Dr Abdul Latif bin Rashid Al Ziyani participated today in the virtual ministerial conference to support the initiative for self-government under Moroccan sovereignty. The Minister expressed sincere thanks to the Kingdom of Morocco and the United States of America for organising this important event, which clearly shows the broad international support for the solution of the Moroccan Sahara issue and the in territorial integrity of Morocco. Dr Alziani indicated that the past year showed a clear momentum in the Middle East to solve the outstanding issues and build a better future for all its countries and peoples, expressing the confidence of Bahrain that this initiative will play an important role in this process reaffirming the appreciation of Bahrain for all those who helped to achieve it. He affirmed that Bahrain and Morocco, under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and His Majesty King Mohammed VI, have a close long-term friendship and that the two countries have always been keen to strengthen these relations in all fields. The Minister stressed that Bahrain has maintained a firm stance on the issue of the Moroccan Sahara as has repeatedly and publicly affirmed its support for the territorial integrity and the national unity of Morocco as demonstrated by the summit. Alziani stated that Bahrain reaffirms that the Moroccan Sahara region is Moroccan land, subject to Moroccan sovereignty, and that the best and most sustainable solution to this issue is the autonomy in the initiative. Referring to Bahrain, I gave a practical example of this support with its decision to open a general consulate in the Moroccan city of Lyon. The foreign minister stated that the autonomy initiative represents an opportunity to find a permanent solution to the Moroccan Sahara issue. The government held a meeting with the Financial and Economic Affairs Committee at the Shura Council and Council of Representatives to discuss the general state budget for the fiscal years 2021 to 2022. The government was represented by the Minister of Finance, National Economic, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, the Minister of Labour and Social Development, Jamil bin Mohammed Al Ali Hamadan, Parliament Minister, Ghanem bin Fadl Abouinian, the Minister of Health, Fayek bin Said Al Saleh, the Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, Zayb bin Rashid Al-Ziani. 
During the meeting, which was held remotely via video conference, the two sides discussed key issues on the agenda, stressing the importance of continuing social support programmes for citizens, developing health services and strengthening plans related to diversifying and spurring economic growth. The government said that citizens' interests represent a top priority in its programmes and plans, stressing keenness on drawing up a general draft budget for the two fiscal years 2021 to 2022, despite the exceptional circumstances resulting from the COVID-19 pandemic and the challenges of low oil prices in global markets. It stressed the importance of maintaining social support for the most needy citizens, continuing to improve the efficiency of government-run services, increasing their effectiveness. It pointed out that the government itself has started reducing administrative expenses, enhancing the efficiency of spending and optimising the use of financial resources. The Ministry of Health announced the total number of citizens and residents who have taken the anti-coronavirus vaccination in the Kingdom of Bahrain had reached about 120,000 as of Friday evening as part of the national vaccination campaign. The Ministry renewed its call upon citizens and residents who are 18 years and over to take appointments in advance by registering electronically to take the antivirus vaccine in two doses to ensure its effectiveness. Bahrain Raid extreme driver Nani Roma set out from Yambu, bound for Jeddah for stage 12, the final stage of the Dakar Rally 2021. Just 447 kilometres separated the remaining competitors from the finish line, made up of 245 kilometres of road and 202 kilometres special stage. The final day of driving was brought to a close with a slightly shortened stage, with the competitive section reduced by 18 kilometres. It was by no means an easy conclusion to the rally, with the competitors having to navigate a chain of steep dunes on their quest towards the finish line on the shore of the Red Sea. Roma, competing in his 25th Dakar, completed the final stage in 11th place, with a time of 2 hours, 27 minutes and 21 seconds, 9 minutes and 48 seconds behind the leader. This was enough to secure fifth place overall, holding his lead over the sixth place at Sheikh Khalid al Qasimi of Abu Dhabi Racing by 6 minutes 43 seconds. The 43rd edition of the Dakar Rally was Bahrain Raid Extreme's debut, with Roma's result the best performance by any new team on its maiden Dakar. It was, it was really tough, just at the beginning, you know, when I lose my co-pilot. And, um, but it's, it's amazing that uh, the job what the team already done, it's, it's amazing. We, the guys create the nice car with the really short time, with the pandemic time, you know, this means it's uh, more hard for us. We work hard. Me, I have two responsibilities. One, it's a pilot, but another, it developed the car. I, I try to do my best, the team also, and this is so happy from the team and I'm happy to be here. Yeah, it's more than we expect. Uh, it, the thing is, never we are happy from anything, but uh, we expect to try to have more issues during the race. We don't have any issue in the stage. Uh, we expect to be more back, but in then we are five. We fight, we, we analyze, and we have a nice split in some areas. This means we now we know more about the car. This means it's uh, really good. Uh, yeah, it's a nice car. It's, we start it's just in the beginning of the everything. This means that it's um, a lot of things to do. We must to go back, sure, next year stronger. And uh, yeah, really happy. In an exclusive interview with Bahrain International Television, Bahrain Raid Extreme BRX team director David Richards spoke about the construction of Bahrain's car to take part in the Dakar Rally 2021. Development of this car has taken a couple of years, so um, testing really didn't start until October at the end of last year. So three months of testing is not normally enough time before you go launching into the most difficult motorsport event in the world. And uh, from that point of view, it's been pretty, uh, it's been pretty tough, but uh, now I, I, everyone's very, very encouraged by it and, uh, and very, very positive. And certainly the, the word around the paddock and everyone who's looking, you know, say, wow, uh, pretty impressed we could come here and with a, a brand new team, brand new car, hit the ground running. This will be an ongoing process to improve the car now. It's, um, you know, 
this Dakar, the first event, will just set the, it's almost an extended test session for us because of the limitations we've had on testing to date. And we can already see ways in which we can improve the reliability of the car and ways in which we can improve its performance. I'd say that the drivers haven't really been pushing it as hard as it could go yet because with a new car, you're always a little bit cautious. So um, towards the end of the event now, I think Sebastian can have, push on a little bit and see how fast the car is a bit better, but we've already got a number of ideas to make it quicker for next time. The Dakar still remains uh, one of the biggest challenges of motorsport anywhere in the world. There's, uh, there are some famous events and we all heard of Monte Carlo Grand Prix and uh, we've heard of the Indianapolis 500 and, uh, and probably this, the sort of Monte Carlo rally and events like this, but in amongst these, the Dakar stands head and shoulders above them as the most challenging motorsport event on this planet. The Ministry of Health said today that the number of active coronavirus cases reached 2,937 with 397 recoveries, 209 registered new cases. 97 of the new registered cases are expatriates and 104 are contacts of active cases and 8 are travel related. The Ministry of Health announces the death of a 71-year-old male citizen from COVID-19 and expresses its condolences to the family of the deceased. The Ministry urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus.